proportions. So this video, uh, we're going to learn what is meant by ratio and proportion. Uh, we're going to see how ratios are used to describe the world around us, we're, and we're going to learn about scale with regard to multiplication and how that works. So let's get started. When we talk about ratio, what we're, what we're really talking about is a comparison of two amounts that have some kind of relationship with each other. A really simple way to think about that is just to think about in our classroom the number of girls to the number of boys there are. And you may have noticed that in the case of our classroom there are four girls and eight boys. These amounts are called terms and so for the girls um, there are four of them and for the boys there are eight of them. Those two terms make up what we call a ratio and it's comparing the amount of girls to the amount of boys. Now you may have noticed at this point that a ratio looks really just like a fraction and you'd be exactly right. That's exactly what ratios are. Let's take a look. In the work we've done with fractions, you're used to seeing fractions just standing by themselves with no meaning to them. But ratios have a relationship. They have a meaning um, that goes along with them. In this case, we have a cake that's been uh, split into four parts and somebody has mysteriously eaten one. Hmm. But with regard to this cake, we're looking for the eaten pieces to the total pieces. And so you could think about what is the relationship of eaten pieces to total pieces. And you can see that there's one eaten piece and there were four total pieces before somebody came along and ate it. So the, ra the ratio is one to four. Just like over here, the ratio was four to eight. That's how we would say it. Now since ratios are exactly the same as fractions, we can notice that this four to eight ratio over here can be simplified to lowest terms. And we can go ahead and do that pretty easily with what we already know. So I would simply take my, my ratio of 4 to 8, and I would see that the common factor was 4, so I'd go ahead and divide each of those by 4. And of course, I would get a new ratio in simplest terms of 1 to 2. So we could say the ratio of girls to boys in this classroom is 1 to 2. Or in other words, for every girl in the classroom, there are two boys. Sorry about that, girls. So it's really no good learning something unless it's useful. And I think you'll find that ratios are really useful to describe the world around us. We use them in science and in sports, the arts, entertainment, you name it, ratios will appear. For instance, let's take this, this thing that looks like Mickey Mouse here. This is a water molecule. A water molecule is made up of hydrogen atoms, and it's also made up of an oxygen atom. And when those atoms combine in such a ratio as two to one, two hydrogen atoms to one oxygen atom, you get water. If they do it in a different way, you get something completely different. In fact, the, the scientific name for water is H2O, and it, defi it describes the relationship. Uh, two hydrogen, one oxygen. That's the ratio. Okay, so ratios are in science, but did you know that they're also in baseball? And I know a lot of you like baseball, so let's take a look at that. One of the things that you can look at in baseball is batting average. And batting average is just, uh, well, it helps you tell whether a player is good or not, but it's really the number of hits a batter can get compared to the number of times that that person is at bat. In this player's case, he, he's had 70 hits uh, while being up at bat 200 times. That's actually a really good average. It comes out to .350, which is super good. Now, another way that uh, ratios become useful is in the... In, when we talk about percentages. Percentages are a special type of ratio based on the number 100. We love to deal with hundreds because they're easy to add and they're easy to multiply and they're easy to divide. They're easy to do everything with. So percentages are really, really useful. Here is my good friend Taylor Swift. Now you might not know this about my good friend Taylor, but in 2014, 22% of all the albums sold in the U U.S. were Taylor Swift albums. That means that for every hundred albums sold in the United States, there were 22 of them that this young lady got paid for. That makes Taylor Swift a very, very rich woman, and that's probably why she doesn't return my calls. Well, now that we really understand ratios, we can start to do something with them. So we're going to talk about proportion now, and a proportion is just two equal ratios. If you understood equivalent fractions, you ought to understand this perfectly. So for this particular model, let's pretend that I'm starting a band. And I've got strange musical taste, so my band is going to have three recorder players in it and one trumpet player. That's going to make quite a sound. Now our band practices a lot, and we get so good that more and more people want to join the band, and more and more people want to listen. So suddenly, the band has to grow. Right now, the ratio that describes the band is three to one, recorders to trumpets. But as more and more people um, come in, I'm going to want to grow the band, but I'm not going to want to grow it unevenly. I need to have the same ratio of recorders to trumpets if the music is going to sound the same. So let's pre 
pretend that I, I um, decide to double the band. I'm going to multiply this ratio by 2. So I'll have 6 in, uh, instead of 3 and 2 instead of 1. Now my band has six recorders in it and two trumpets. It's a bigger sound, but it's a similar sound because I grew the terms of my ratio proportionally. In this particular case, three to one is proportional to six to two. That's what we mean by proportion. So here's a little uh, trick that uh, will help you tell if two ratios are proportional or not. If you multiply a cross on these, you'll see that one times six is six, and 2 times 3 is 6. When that happens, when you cross multiply and they're the same product, um, that tells you that the ratios are proportional. One thing you do have to be careful of, though, with proportions is that your terms are in the right place. Over here, we have 3 uh, to 1, and this is recorders to trumpets, and this is 6 to 2 recorders to trumpets. I need to make sure that recorders go with recorders and trumpets go with trumpets. Otherwise, things don't work out. Let me show you an example. So here we have uh, two fractions, and uh, you can see that there's a numerator and a denominator, shirt and shorts. And when you're setting up proportions, you want to make sure that your terms match. Shirts with shirts, shorts with shorts. If you don't, really bad things can happen. Yeah, that, that doesn't work. But proportions can go the other way, too. We don't just grow things with proportions. We can also make things uh, shrink proportionally as well. So here's my big band, but uh, unfortunately, we were a one-hit wonder, and nobody wants to hear our music anymore. So it's time for the band to shrink. And since we don't have a drummer, we'll have to fire some recorders and some trumpets. Now, you'll remember I grew my band by multiplying by a number that was greater than 1. And so to shrink my band, I'm going to multiply by a number that's less than one, but not quite zero. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to use multiplication again, but this time I'm going to multiply not by two, but by one half. I want to cut my band in half. I want half of what I had before. So six times one half, of course, is three, and half of two is one, and so you'll see I'm back to my original proportion. A quick check by cross-multiplying, and you'll see that my products are still six, so I know these ratios are still proportional. This brings us to the last point, which is that multiplication is used to scale our ratios. That is, make them grow at a proportional rate or shrink at a proportional rate. Using multiplication is almost like coming across a magical scaling ray gun. With it, you could make things grow or shrink proportionally. That would be so cool. Well, maybe not that cool. So do you remember how weird it was when we multiplied decimals by decimals and the product got smaller and you guys were all freaked out by that? Well, now we know why, because multiplication is not making things bigger. It's a function of scaling. It's growing or shrinking something proportionally. Now we know that if we multiply by a whole number greater than one, and there is proportional growth. This also explains why when we multiply by one, there's absolutely no change at all, and why when we multiply by a number less than one but greater than zero, there's proportional shrinking. It makes sense! Yay! Multiplication, our magical scaling ray. Well, that's it. I, I hope you took some good notes, and I hope this cleared up some questions. We'll be doing a lot with uh, ratio and proportion in class, and there's going to be another video on how to solve problems uh, using proportions, so stay tuned for that. But lastly, if there's one thing that you get from this video, please make sure, make sure that you never play with a multiplication ray gun. Thanks, guys. That was fun. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.